when I call it an adventure, it's beginning to look like a blind man with no legs attempting to climb Mount Everest. Well, it's not quite that bad, but in my adventure into CNC woodworking so far, I've been okay on the mechanical building of the machine, slow though that's been, but when it comes to understanding electronic circuits and CNC software, well, we'll cross the G-codes bridge when I come to it. Now in this video I'm going to share with you the exciting stage of moving the Ooze Nest work bee that I built in my living room to my tiny workshop and building a bench for it. A solid purpose-built bench that replaces a battle-worn bench top that has history over the past 35 years or so. Yes, on this bench I created many commissioned and exhibition pieces, largely by hand, well using hand tools and routers etc. So it's a rite of passage almost to transform this bench while still acknowledging that hand skills are not made redundant by using a robot machine. Now let's look at the requirements of the bench and how I propose using a CNC machine. I'm not using a noisy router but a large water-cooled 2.2 kilowatt spindle so I have to make room for the water cooling system which will probably be underneath the bench and also have easy access to the computer, the power supply and the VFD, I think it's called, the Variable Feed Drive Unit. A major consideration in my own small and cramped workshop is that my CNC machine should not restrict the use of my radial arm saw and band saw on the one side and the milling machine on the other side when using long pieces of wood. The gantry obviously will be moved out of the way when the other machines are being used. One thing I've noticed from other videos on CNC woodworking is that often the cabling and tubing is rather untidy. So this, together with uh, minimising wood dust, is my goal. And as you can see in the video, there's been a degree of trial and error in the build. Now, another observation I have, being a total beginner to CNC, is that everybody seems to machine the wood lying flat on the soil board. But what about machining the end of components, such as joint features? You may be aware of my Omni Jig that's featured in my video Router Jigging. This opens up a whole new dimension in routing. So I'll probably create various spoil boards, some with openings and quick clamping systems beneath. I did notice that despite my placing the inner frame rails horizontally, I'm still severely restricted in depth of cut. And as I'm building a really robust bench, do I actually need those rails uh, that prevent the frame from, from racking? I'll probably remove them and secure the framework to the bench and have a simple system of adjustable height uh, spoil boards. Well, that's something for future videos. As you can see, I use some fairly unconventional methods despite my strict traditional training in cabinet making. I use a hot melt glue gun for temporary fixing and I use concrete screws for the joints driven in with an impact driver. If it works, it works. Another departure from my traditional training is I tend to jump in and design things as I go along. I just bought a load of sturdy fencing rails and decided to use just that standard section for the bench. Now on mounting the machine I noticed I hadn't made allowance in the bench framework to adjust the guide bearings as the cam adjusters are underneath. It just means I'll have to cut away the frame at the position where I part the gantry to make those adjustments. It won't affect the sturdiness of the bench. Now making the computer mounting and general control panel was fun and I must admit took much longer than the bench itself as positioning the components is very important uh, not to get in the way and to be accessible. 
I don't know why the radial arm saw is so underrated. This one I bought second hand and I've used it over nearly half a century now. You see, this is my interest in CNC. What can the tool actually do? Now all these recesses are to navigate around fixtures already in my workshop, so your situation will be different of course. But I'm showing here the simplicity of construction, but also the need for sturdiness. And I'm also thinking of whether I'll later encase most of this to keep the dust out. The glue gun acts as a clamping method and all the joints are reinforced with countersunk screws. I also wanted to keep the bench space below free so creating a cantilever structure seemed the best solution. Well let's play a bit of guitar while I show the remaining rather organic process of building the control unit arm. moment of truth. I got it wrong, silly boy. The viewing angle isn't quite right. Now why didn't I build an adjustable pivoting computer support? So I've taken that bit apart and lured the support to get the viewing angle just right for me. You may have noticed the plywood collar on my spindle. I will be stack laminating the profile to get the right strength. I'm happy to share my half century or so of diverse woodworking experience, but I hope out there there is a viewer who could help me uh, on the software side, maybe via Zoom video calls to learn how to do basic CNC routing functions uh, using G-codes. I'm using Duet software and to be honest I haven't a clue and my young friend who helped me uh, set this up now has a young child to look after. Well I hope you enjoyed this video and please keep posted to this series on my adventure with CNC routing. Thanks for watching. <laughs>